Hey guys, welcome back. All right, today we're gonna work on a ramp test. All right, so if you've been watching any of the other videos, um, with all the work we've done, we've definitely found out that uh, the focal length of the laser uh, is not right when it's sitting on the bed. So what we're going to do is a ramp test in there um, and figure out exactly the length that we need from the laser to our material. Okay, so a ramp test. Basically what it is is we create a ramp and just burn a line down it and we can see where the laser is large at the top it's large at the bottom and you get skinny in the middle that skinny part in the middle is the focal length that you want uh, the top of your material to be at so what we're going to do we've taken out this middle piece and we're going to use this built-in clamp and this piece is just perfect for this so i'm going to put it right there and this is right where it's not going to hit. We know our focal length is below this, so right above this is going to be fine. We're going to be able to figure out exactly where it needs to be. My guess is right about level with the bed, which is why uh, we can't put anything on top of the bed. So, what I've done in light burn is extremely simple. I've drawn a line. It's set at 150 millimeters a second. Power in light burn is 100% because we are going to set it on the laser. So we'll get the laser turned on. And you can see right here we've got it at 40%. That may be too powerful, it may not be, but we're going to go ahead and run that test. All right, now we can open the laser up and take a look at where it's burning. So like we expected, it's just basically exactly level with uh, that board and then it gets big here lower down. So I'm actually going to raise this up just a little bit, move the line and light burn and test it again. Alright, line is adjusted. I moved the board up to where it's a little bit taller. Hopefully we'll see where it's wide at the top before it gets uh, thin and then fat again at the bottom. All right, there we can see it a little bit better. So now we can find exactly where that middle mark is. Um, and then we know it's you know bad at the bottom. So I'm gonna turn the laser back off. All right, I'm gonna use calipers for this and I'll show you why. So when we get down in here, we can see where our, our smallest point is. And let's grab a pencil. So I'm going to mark it down here so that we'll be able to find it pretty quickly. It looks like it is thinnest, you know, right here is where the laser line looks the best. That's actually a little bit higher than I thought it was going to be. Sorry, it's a little hard to see, but that's why I'm marking it. So right there is where I like where it's at the best. Now we know that this laser comes as a two inch um, focal length. That's what it's supposed to be. But that is from the bottom of the lens. When we have the air assist on there, we can no longer really quickly measure from the bottom of the lens. So what I've decided to do is we are going to measure from from the Y axis bar. So what I'm gonna do is I want to make a piece that hangs over this and shows us exactly where the right spot is. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put that right there. Get the arm where we want it, sorry. And then push down, right? And then we can see 2.546 inches from here, right? So that's lower than where the focal length is, but that's fine. We want to know where it is from the top of this bar so that we can put a piece and just 
basically a little U piece, hang it over that and then we'll know exactly where the top of the material needs to be. All right, so now that we know where that's at, we'll be able to measure um, all the material that we put in. So in this situation, say we put this piece right here, we know that it should be two, five, four, six from there, but it is in fact way taller than that. That's why things haven't been looking as good as they need to be because the laser is not able to get as small as it can be. So we're not getting as good a result as we want. That's why we're doing this whole thing. Now, since we know that the material has to be, so we do have, all right, so we've got barely any, we cannot probably, we can't even get a three millimeter piece in there. Um, so that comes to the next part. I'm gonna actually take this bed out for the next project we do. And what we'll do is we'll just, until we get a proper bed in there, we'll just put material underneath it, like pieces of wood to get exactly where we want our Z axis depth at so that we get the best results possible. All right, here we are in Tinkercad. Uh, this is just a site you can go to and do uh, 3D printing, uh, 3D modeling, rather. Uh, this is the first time I've ever used it. I wanted to see if it was going to be good enough to do kind of quick, fast programs, and it looks like it's going to be great. Uh, start with just, you know, two simple squares is what I'm doing. We're just going to build a basic L design, and that is going to be to sit on top of the gantry and go down to where the top of our bed needs to be. So I pull in our measurements here that we know we need. Um, across doesn't really matter, it's the depth that matters. And make sure you get the proper depth of where the ramp test was plus the thickness of the other bar that you're putting in there. And we're going to go ahead and also add in some text here. I want it to say bed and then point an arrow down so that you know what direction um, this gauge needs to be in. Um, this program is really cool. It's really easy to uh, just kind of change sizes, shapes, and put it exactly where you want it. It's kind of playing, so it took me a little bit longer than it probably would after you get more used to it and figuring out which which buttons move at which directions. But um, it's very intuitive once you get in and play around with it. Um, I was thinking about making the text actually sit down and extruded down as opposed to sitting on top of it and having the writing there, but um, you know, frankly, didn't want to take the time to figure it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the text uh, just sit a little bit proud on top of it so that it's uh, very legible on top of the 3D print. And here we are putting in the text, and then we're going to finish the sizing of both of those. Um, like I said, I wanted I wanted to get the bed down low, so I'm trying it here, but I don't see anything... Uh, quick to show me how to do that right if you guys know or you guys have played with this um, please leave a comment down below and let me know uh, what I was missing on that so now I have decided I'm just gonna make it a little bit proud and we'll resize according to that So I don't want it to be too much taller above it. It doesn't really need to be. So let's get that down just a little bit. Yeah, we like it there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is that I actually want to select all three of these. And we are going to use this little combine button and make it one big shape. Great. So now we've got one big shape. We've got the measurements we want. Let's go ahead and rename it. And then we can export it as an STL and drop that right into your slicer. So, yep, it's great. It's cloud-based. Um, you've got a few things to pick from, not a lot. It looks like STL, uh, SVG, different things like that. We're going STL because we're going in the printer. And here we are in Cura. So we can... Drag this in from our downloads folder is where it dropped it. Um, 
Now I did notice that I we I built it at three quarters originally, and that's just bigger than I wanted. So I went ahead and uh, went back, shortened it in Tinkercad, and here we are pulling in uh, the new corrected size. So it's not near as thick. Didn't it need to be? It was also going to take like two and a half hours or something. So dropping this down. Uh, to less than half the time by making it smaller. Um, going with a fairly low infill. Um, probably could have done a little bit less and shrunk it down even more to make it faster, but this is what I ended up going with, and it ended up turning out uh, really great. So you save it to the uh, disc, and then here's the finished product. All right, just wanted to take a second and say thanks for all the comments. Uh, this was actually one uh, to do a ramp test on it, and it does show me how far our material was off, so that's a, a great help. It's going to improve our process from here on out, so thanks for all of those, and keep them coming.